Matt Lenehan for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Start, Forge Irish Stout, Right to Fight and Freebets.com. We are here with Shannon Courtney. Shannon, it's been an awfully long time. I know I've seen you sort of in between as last interview. Um, first off, good Christmas, good New Year? Yeah, it was nice. I was, I was allowed to go home for a couple of days over Christmas and see my family and friends, which was nice. But then straight back to Liverpool, straight back to the grind. You've sort of found a new lease of life here. It's give you that love back for boxing, I feel. Um, just talk to me about Liverpool. What's it been like? Um, I know you've been here a while, but we've not had that chat yet. So what's this done for you as person, boxer, everything? Do you know what? Boxing, it's done wonders, but as a person, it's done me the world of good, to be honest. Do you know, I'm, I'm genuinely happier in Liverpool than I was in London, and that's where my home is, that's where my friends and family are. This place is just... It's not even like the city's a great city, it's the people. You Genuinely, I'm not just saying it because I live here now, you can't beat Scousers. People up north are genuinely happier. They'll do anything to help you. And I think I'm blessed I'm in this gym, and I don't just mean by the coaches and the lads and the team, but you've got... The, the fellows that come in the morning and train and you just got a great group of people here in the rotunda and they all genuinely care for me and yeah I just you can't beat Scousers they are the best people in the world I'm going to say you've got um, guys like Darren Till have come in here and they yeah. they just had the chat with him now and said look you know you're a huge name but you've still got that drive that hunger what's it like having a guy like him about obviously beef he comes here and yeah. still does his thing you're surrounded by you know world champions, you know, champ championship caliber fighters all the time. What's 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 that like for you? I know you've done that down in obviously down south, but you it's up here it's a little bit different. What's it been like though? In this gym, there's genuinely no ego. It doesn't matter if you've had one fight or if you're a unified world champion. Everyone here's treated the same, which is the beautiful thing about it. And like I said, you've got people like Darren who yeah, he's an absolute superstar. Like I didn't know how big he was till I came here. And he, he's massive and, like, for example, last Friday we had Hills and he had a bit of an injury, but he turned up in his slippers to come and support us, give us a little bit of moral support. That's the kind of guy he is. And that's what everyone here is like. They don't care if, you, if you're Jack Turner and you've had four fights and you're on your way up or if you're beefy and you're a household name. It doesn't matter. Everyone's treated the same. And that's the beautiful thing about this gym. Yeah, by the way, shout out to Jack Turner from, he looks an incredible fighter. I know he's one of the young guns in this gym along with Frankie Stringer and the rest of them, yeah. but yeah, keep an eye out for them. Look, um, in terms of yourself and what you've sort of been through, you've had a really hard year, you've mentioned all that, um, but this year, what does this year mean for you? You are always linked with big fights, no matter what, no matter how long you've been out the ring, the same names get mentioned, which I'm sure it's maybe like a bit like Groundhog Day for you, but... Yeah. It still must be exciting that you're still linked with world titles, big rematches. You know, what's 2024 got in store for you? To be honest with you, all I want is the big fights. All I want is the world titles now. Um, yeah, I've had a year out, not through my own choice. You know, um, I had to have another bit of surgery on my leg. Um, it's not well documented at all, but I was very poorly. Um, and I had to step away from the sport for a while until I got well again, um, which I now, thank God, I am well again and made the choice to move to Liverpool, move my whole life here. So if anyone ever says that I don't want this or take this seriously, you you must be mad because I've moved my whole life to Liverpool. I'm living in a city on my own where I came here not knowing a single soul just to get back on track, just to be a world Cup champion again, you know. So all I want now is the big fights, you know. Um, we're ongoing talks with Eddie about fighting Nina Hughes, which is a fight that I want. But if that fight can't materialise, I don't care if I have to fight Yoshida, you know, who's just beating Ebony, which I was actually gutted about because I want to fight Ebony again because it's a massive fight for the pair of us. But um, I don't care who I fight now. I just want to fight. I just want a world title. And then once I get back, because the way I'm training here, the way that, that Joseph and Declan have got me now, I've never been more confident in myself. I don't think I know I'd beat anyone now. With them two in my corner, it's just a matter of time before I'm world champion. I remember speaking to you, I can't remember when it was, it was obviously a while back now, but I remember you saying the first time around, you maybe didn't appreciate what it was, but now, obviously, you, when you see that you're only like a couple of fights off or one fight off, depending if Nina gets made, obviously, does it mean that much more for you now when you're preparing, when you're sort of doing the, the work in the gym and you're like, you know what, that, that fire, because if you do get a chance to become world champion again, yeah. will it mean that much more to you? Yeah, I'm a realist and I'm not going to be ignorant and be like... Oh, you know, and the, this time it'd be better. I'm not being ignorant. The first time, it came to me too easy, and I didn't look after it. And, you know, 
and maybe I took my eye off the ball. And obviously, don't get me wrong, I lost my fight, my world title in a fight where I had, you could see I was all strapped up. I had to have operation literally the week after. So I was injured, but this time it would mean 10 times more to me because I've worked my absolute ass off to get back to being happy and healthy again where I want to fight, where I want to box, where I'm now in a good position. And I'm training my ass off and anyone that's come since I've been here, anyone that's come here and sparred me will tell you, different caliber of fighter now, completely. Beforehand, did it feel more like a job? Like you just turn up because that's what you have to do, whereas now you're sort of bouncing in the gym because you want to do it and it's more of a it's more of an enjoyment. I'm not saying training in hard because what you do is just to like <laughs> all these rounds today and it looks bloody hard, but there's more of a, a will and want to do it more than a, a chore kind of thing. Yeah, I think without going into too much detail, you know, I wasn't happy before mm-hmm. um, and I am happy here in this gym. You know... I'm always first in, last out, because I enjoy my job. Well, it's not a job. I'm ble- I'm someone who's very blessed to say that I wake up every day and do what I love for a living. Not many people can say that. I do, so I need to take that like, ball by the horns and appreciate what you've got, you know, because not everyone can say that. So, And I know I can come in this gym even on a rest day. Not that I have rest days, because I despise resting, but I can come in and just sit in here and chat to anyone, you know, mm-hmm. This gym has become a home to me, so yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be here. You mentioned there you don't like rest days. What do you do on your rest days? How do you switch off then from it? I know you probably don't because it's like you've just done a session and so you probably saw aching you know, or going to see yeah. physios, but what do you do to sort of take that you know pressure out? Well, when I'm here... Like, like, what do you do? Like, As in, you've got a rest day, say, tomorrow. What do you? How do you spend that time sort of taking your mind off it? Because it is full on. This is like, yeah. it's no joke kind of thing. I'll be honest with you. I kind of lose my head a little bit on rest days because, you know, when you're training twice a day, your day revolves around being in the gym. Here, you know, I've not got my girls around me. I'm here surrounded by, like, 50 men every day. So that's a little bit difficult. So I'll try and, you know, maybe go for, like, a massage, physio, go for a walk around the town because Liverpool is a beautiful city. And even if it means going out with one of the lads for a coffee or something, just try and keep your day busy. Mm -hmm make the hours pass as quick as they can so I'm back in the gym where I'm happy again. <laughs> Look, um, I've got to ask you, so obviously you mentioned earlier, away from yourself getting back in the ring, there were some other fights that have happened. I know Nina's still waiting to return, potentially against you. Um, Ebony and Yoshida, you touched on it a little bit earlier. Yeah. Um, just give me sort of reactions to that. Were you surprised? I know y- Yoshida had lost, I think it was a, a final element to, to become mandatory a few weeks before that, but yeah. she turned up and... Um, all credit to her. She did. She did. She did a job that night. What did you make of the fight? Um, you can see that Ebony's style has changed with David. Um, it was the wrong style for Yashida. Where Yashida is my very much a come forward, aggressive, very very good heart, uh, very good work rate kind of fight. Was I think with with Dave Crowell, she's trying to be a bit more of a counter fighter have a bit more flair about her, whereas before she was, like, all aggressive kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Despite people thinking I probably wanted everybody to lose, I didn't. I was gutted when she lost because her winning that fight, keeping the world title, makes me and her a bigger fight, makes me and her more money. Do you know what I mean? Without the world title, there's less money on the table. So when me and her do fight again, because I do believe it happens... It will be a big fight because the first one was such a big build up. This will be bigger. So I'm hoping that she goes and has the rematch with Yoshida and wins the world title back. If she doesn't, then I'll fight Yoshida mm-hmm. and I'll get the world title. Either way, do you still want that fight back with Ebony just because of the size of the first one? Yeah, 100%. 100% I want the fight again because it was a. Listen, I'm back. I don't care who I fight now. I genuinely don't care who I fight. I'll fight anyone, but I want the big names. I want the. I'm 30 years old now, if anyone asks 25, but I'm 30 years old now, so I've not got years left in the game. So I want to have the big fights now, cash in, make as much money as I can, win all the belts. Like, even putting money to a side, I just want all the belts now, and then get out with my brain still intact, so that's the main thing. You mentioned there, obviously, X amount of years old, um, 25, <laughs> not on paper, um, but you have mentioned... If you have an end game, I know a lot of fighters and it gets harder towards the end because if you have achieved what you want, you'll always be a world champion. That's in the history book. Shannon Courtney, 
you know, WBA world champion. But um, do you do you sort of look and go right? I've two years left at this. I need to have a good run. Or is it a case of not yeah, but, no, 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 no? But I'm saying, <laughs> but is it? But do you have a plan where you go? You know what? By this point here, I yeah. want, I want to, I want to be out of here, and I want to then move on to the next phase. Whether it whether it be you know you know, maybe giving back to the sport, training, grassroots, boxing, whatever it is. Do you look at that time point? Yeah, of course. Um, like you said, I'm in the history books. I'm a world champion, which not many people can say, can say they've done that. But for me, just being a WBA world champion isn't enough. I want all the belts. That's that's all I care about now. But truth be told, yeah, I don't want to do this for years and years to come because I would like to have a family one day. I'd like to have kids and... I don't want to be one of them people. And listen, you've got people like Tash Jonas, even Nina, that have gone and had kids and come back into the sport. Fair play to them. I couldn't do that. Yeah. Me personally, I couldn't do that. So I want to win all the belts. I want to finish boxing. I don't want boxing to finish me. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Which you, unfortunately you see happen quite a lot nowadays. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd like to get out, like I said, with my brains intact and then sail off into the sunset and have, have children. Would you want your kids to box? I've asked, I asked a lot of boxers this, and say you have whatever, little girl, little boy, whatever, and they get to that age, like when they start young and they see what mummy's achieved, you've done this. I know a lot of boxers say I box, so you didn't have to and all this, yeah. but if they want to, are you someone who'd be for or against? Listen, you can't stop your kids doing what they want to do. Um, if I was to sit here now, and listen, I'm an advocate of women's boxing, of course I am. If I was to sit here now and say, yeah, I'd let my daughter box, I would be lying to you because I know how hard this this... I want to say game, but it's not a game. I want that, yeah, this how hard this sport, this industry. I love the sport. I hate the business. Yeah. I'd like my kids to box, you know, recreationally or maybe even amateur, just because it's fantastic discipline, you know, keeps you in good shape, happy, healthy. But I also know that this, not again, not the sport, this business, this industry has caused me to have severe mental health issues where I'm up and down. You know, you're waiting for a fight date that never comes and then you're... You, working your ass off in the gym and then you just like I've been going through it myself recently if I'm, I'm going to be honest with you I'm having a bit of a hard time at the moment because I can't get a fight date yeah. I've moved my whole life here I'm training every day I that's just, the side people don't see though because they that. see the obviously everyone's on social media and to a, to a degree a lot of it can be fake because you, you promote obviously you promote yourself you put pictures up of you know events whatever it is and you know they'll be selected but you're not ever going to take a picture on a bad day and go this is what's happening today this is shit this yeah. is this um, but this is what you guys go through and I tell anyone who's like maybe casual fan who's like what are they up to mind about it's like look it's a hard sport like you, you do reap the rewards if you do well in the yeah. game but if not um, you do have these days where you might train for eight weeks a fight's locked in someone might pull out what does that like do to you kind of yeah. thing? So is that an important message you want to get across? Maybe for people who don't understand. Yeah, like I put up um, an Instagram post the other day saying everyone was posting all their highlights in 2023 and I was sitting there getting a harsh post and I thought, no, why am I going to lie? Because it's, it's just bullshit. Social media is yeah. fake and I've done fake social media for so many years and I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not going to hide behind these fake filters and make it unhappy. I've had the worst year of my life. I couldn't even begin to describe to you and... I'm not going to be letting people in the public think I'm living the life of Riley when I bloody well wasn't. Mm-hmm. I've been in a bad place. Yeah. And you, like I said, you, I've become the master of fake smiling. I don't want to be that person anymore. Yeah. I want to just be me. I want to be real. And it's been a tough journey. I'm glad I'm back. And I'm. if it wasn't, I'm being honest, if it wasn't for Joseph and Declan and how they've treated me like family and they've been unbelievable to me, probably would have walked away at from boxing mm-hmm. I've come here and I've got a new lease of life and I'm enjoying it again and that's why I've been able to have the second crack of the whip because I'm enjoying the sport because before it was it was a chore well, look, before we sign before we sign this off and message to your fans and supporters there's a couple of things I want to ask us Natasha's coming here a bit later her and Michaela May are having a fight I think that's a terrific fight Natasha's achieved a lot in the sport her last 12 months she's skyrocketed after that first world title victory What do you make of that fight um, and how do you see it going? I think it's a tough fight for both of them, to be honest. Um, Tasha's, listen, she's a hard-hitting southpaw and she's awkward. I think Maya is naturally got that size on her her part. Um, It's a tough fight and you've got to give credit to both women for taking it. Great fight. Big legacy fight. And it's nice to see women putting their, their, like, 
on the line, you know, because they want them big fights, they want them big paydays. So it's a fight I'm excited to watch, to be honest. Yeah, and finally, just to sign us off, uh, have you got a message to all your fans, friends, supporters? Obviously, maybe not heard for you in such a while, but <laughs> your sponsors, obviously, people who support you in this game, have you got a message for them? Yeah, just, you know, I've, I've purposely had a year off camera um, because I was struggling a little bit and I'm back now and I'm probably still not confident behind a camera, but I'm doing it because I've been made to do this today. That's a lie. <laughs> that is a lie. Not by you, yeah. by my coach. <laughs> yeah, 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 shout out to Joe. Um, but just even with a year out, you know, I'm still I still get messages nonstop every single day. When are you fighting? When are you fighting? People still want to see me out there. People are still supporting me. You know, I've got amazing, incredible sponsors. You know, Power Day, rebuyingyourphone.com that have stood by me through severe injury. Just thank you for being there. Thank you for standing by me. And I promise you now, once the fight date comes, I'll be collecting belts this year. Literally nothing and nobody's getting in my way. Well, Shannon, it's been a pleasure. It's been an awfully long time. It's been good to get you back. Um, look, we look forward to seeing you back in the ring. I know it's been a long time, but you know that's where we want to see you back fighting again and uh, appreciate your time. Uh, thank you for coming in. We need to think of a new advert for freebets.com. Get your best betting offers from freebets.com. Yeah, that'll do. The following deals are now live.